Shevsky here. Welcome to Fantasy House. Every week, I have a different special guest that takes us through an imaginary tour of their trippy fantasy house. It's like uh, Adventure Time World HGTV stuff. You know, imagine MTV Cribs in the Rick and Morty universe. That's what it is. It's a creative exercise for adults. We get to know them a little better. And there's no limits on money or technology, so they get creative and weird. So it's really exciting. Uh, this week, my guest is a uh, good buddy, hilarious comedian, Jeffrey Baldinger. I'm super stoked on that. We've been friends for so freaking long, so it's, it's exciting. Uh, every week, this episode is always brought to you by me, John Shevsky, the uh, Southern California real estate agent. I'm your Southern California realtor, not just in the fantasy world, in the real 3D world, which also might be a simulation, disclaimer. Uh, I'm an actual uh, realtor. So if you're thinking about buying a house, selling a house, even during these crazy times, you'll notice the sound is weird. That's because we're doing a Zoom podcast. Even during these crazy times, houses are being bought and sold right now. I'm in escrow currently uh, with one of my clients. Uh, I have another client that's actually still out shopping for homes. There's a lot of precautions taken. It's not as quick and easy as it used to be where you could just run around willy-nilly going and see houses, but people are still doing showings. People are still selling. Uh, people are still buying. So if you have any questions about any of that, I'd be happy to do a Zoom a Zoom call with you. Uh, you can send me an email at uh, uh, fantasyhousepodcast at gmail.com and uh, we can set up, we can set up a, a consultation, whether you're a buyer or seller or even investment property stuff. Just let me know and we'll chat. I'm really excited about this episode. Uh, one of my good friends, Jeffrey Baldinger, we always riff. We always have a good time. We've made some really fun comedy stuff together over the years, creative stuff. We made a really cool little series called Bus Boys a long time ago. No, it's not in a restaurant. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. So uh, we're, let's, let's get this show started in the words of the great Angelo Bowers. Let us do this. <laughs> Man, John Shevsky, thank you for having me. My name is Jeffrey Baldinger, as you so eloquently put, and I'm happy, so happy, to be on this podcast with you uh, to describe my fantasy house. I am currently living in West Hollywood, California, alone in my apartment, quarantined. <laughs> the way you said that, alone in my apartment, like many people in Hollywood. Like many, many people. Well, it was fun because when, when we were scheduling this, I jokingly, and I didn't think you got it, but you did, but I jokingly said, uh, are you sure you'll be home? Oh, yes. And, you know, okay. and you're like, yeah, I'll be home. We'll, we'll all be home. <laughs> I'll be home. I'm always home. Always home. This is, the first, this is the first fantasy house that I have done since this quarantine or whatever they call it, stay-at-home orders in, in California. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not arguing against them. I mean, they're great. They're great orders. I'm loving them. They're great um, orders. If it's going to make us safer and keep less people from dying, we're down. If it's going to not overwhelm the health system, we'll stay home. But man, <clears throat> it's been crazy. I, I, I emotionally wasn't able to even do any comedy for about nine or ten <laughs> days, where I barely slept, barely ate, and my wife was very upset with how uh, depressed and ang- anxiety I was. And then finally, now yeah. we're doing it. It's it, this is so exciting. So how are you? I mean. You know, um, we're I'm, both a couple of Jews, so obviously we're both just. Ah, this is very scary. <laughs> oh god, it's it's the same stuff. It's you know, it's going through. It's like when it first started, I was like, you know, this is insane. That I can't like, I I became nervous when the first uh, when the first show got canceled. The first uh, first comedy show got canceled. I was like, oh shit, it's serious now because you and I both know comedians. We are all about the stage we're very selfish people as far as like it's the stage time stage time stage time and so when the show got canceled the first show got canceled i was like oh if comedians are taking this seriously then it's serious because nothing will keep us away from the stage unless it's like fucking real you know yeah comedians sacrifice everything to be on stage everything they're all i mean i think regular people don't even realize like it's mostly not seinfeld style i mean it is but like in a much trashier version yeah and, absolutely and so when comedians are like i'm giving up my heroin you're like that's all you have though is your heroin it's like this is bad you chasing that dragon for years and you're just gonna let it go i mean we gotta let it go for right now yeah all right i guess but so that was and so uh 
just being antsy, being in like, and then for me, I was like, wait, I, I, I kept on not knowing if it was okay to go outside even, you know, cause I kept on hearing like, Oh, you gotta stay in, you gotta stay inside. And it's cause it's not safe to go outside. But then other people were like, yeah, but you should still like take a walk. I was like, yeah, but how, isn't that going outside though? Isn't that, yeah. how is it, how is it safe? How is it not safe to be outside? But then also it's not safe not to go outside. You should be healthy to go outside and stuff like that. It was just this whole thing of just me being like, I don't, I don't know if I can go outside with my door. I, I well, can't leave my house. I mean, yeah. as I said before, we are Jews. So, of course, people listen like, wait, you didn't know you could go outside? I was like, I didn't know. I would say, we say, there was a lot of reports coming in. But it, I didn't. I needed to take my vitamin D shots. Dude, I, so for you living in the city, how, like, is it, is there enough space outside to walk? Because I'm in the suburbs. So, like, when I go out, I can ride my bike around my neighborhood. I yeah. try to stay around my neighborhood just to be close to home. Right, but, right. But because, you know, it's like you don't want to, like, if you get hit by a car, you don't want to have to be rushed to the hospital right now. Because, A, you don't want to tax the system any more than it's already being taxed. And, exactly. B, you don't want to be exposed. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So I stay right in my neighborhood. But I'm out. I'm able to go ride my bike. I was just actually riding earlier in my – a couple neighbors in our block that I've gotten to know – we're walking their dog and I ended up riding like six or 10 feet away from them. But we had a conversation for like a half an hour and I was able to do that. And there's not a lot of like problems. Like there's a, right. you know, a car comes down the street. We all kind of spread, go our separate ways to give the car space. And then we get back together again. We're riding, we're talking, but we're not close enough to get each other infected. Hopefully. Right. Hopefully. So, That's the thing. Like, I have that, but like in the city, what is that like? If you go outside, is there. It's weird. It's weird. I, 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 Cause I still don't go outside that much. <laughs> you need some sun. Dude, you're going to go insane. To start. I need to start doing more walks. I took a, I took a nice long walk uh, two days ago. Uh, Physically or in your mind? Uh, for real, for real. Okay. Normally it's just in my mind, but for this time for real, I, I got up to – so like my step count two days ago, I got over uh, – I got like uh, 7,000 steps, which was uh, pretty good, uh, as opposed to my previous day's 57. <laughs> well, you don't look any fatter, so that's good. I appreciate that. Thank you. But you want to keep your muscles from atrophy. The face up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you lower it down like, whose titties like, are that? Oh. It's Jabba. <laughs> uh, did you see the Jabba avocado toast that someone did? Avocado the Hut. What? They did a Jabba, Jabba the Hut avocado toast. Yeah, yeah. Jabba avocado waka waka um, uh, avocado. Um, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, I guess that's why they did it. <laughs> Jabba, you silly, silly man, you. Uh, oh, Jabba. Jabba the Hut. Is the coffee rendition of it? I don't know. Java the Hut, maybe that could be a coffee shop. Let's make that a coffee shop. Java the Hut. That seems like if it's not used, we How should does make. Star Wars it. not already have Java yeah. the Hut. Java the Hut. Come on, that's Come gold. On. They'll, they'll have it. They'll have it soon. Yeah, they'll have it soon. Okay, so uh, so you, you're you're not getting out enough. So I don't want to use this podcast yeah. to scold you because who am I to, to judge? But for your own safety, get the fuck out of your apartment, dude. And Go walk around. So I went outside and I was going to walk with a friend who we, we, we stayed about, you know, six feet away or whatever, trying with wearing my mask and stuff like that. And overall, uh, every so often I've been outside to go like grocery stop shopping and stuff like that. And throughout, I, I'm always surprised at how many people are still out, but even more surprised at how many people are out without masks and stuff like that, which is weird. Yeah. But uh, like two days ago when I was walking around, it wasn't too bad. There weren't too many people walking around. Like the only people that I really saw walking around were people walking dogs and yeah. stuff like that. It was like necessary. You had, you had to walk your dogs. You got to do that stuff. But just like people who aren't wearing masks, I'm like, why aren't you wearing a mask? I know it's hard to get a mask, but where it's hard to get them. Yeah. The, the system's not used to this much stuff happening at once in a specific uh, like sector. Like it's used to being spread out. So. Yeah. They're not used to like everywhere. Like they had a shortage of elastic, uh, elastic. My, my a friend, my friend Randall in Texas, he's making masks at home. My cousin up in Sacramento, she's making masks at home. And my, my mother-in-law masks, all these family members making masks. And they're like, Hey, where do you get elastic? And I see them talking to each other and, and in text threads and they can't get elastic. So like things just aren't used to being used. Huh? You don't think about elastic as like, Oh, we need elastic. Oh, what, what are we going to get our elastic, elastic shipment in? You know, it's like, that's something you don't, people are, People are wondering when elastic shipment's going to happen. And then, yeah. you know, like there's uh, people like, like we're, we're asking for something from the, this system that's been built, presuming that like this many people are at work at this hour, this many people are going to be on the freeway at this hour, this many people are going to be ordering food at this hour. So like we're totally just taking stuff and going and just moving it yeah. around in this whole other direction now. 
demanding in a different way. So I'm just thankful that it's held up this strong as it is right now and hoping that it continues to hold up this strong and is better because like yeah. summer's coming and like we live in SoCal, it's going to be so hot. Oh and, my God. And it's going to be where I live all the way on the, the East end of, of LA County. It's going to be a 110 degrees yeah. maybe, you know, yeah. but like we can't have the air conditioning shutting off because everyone's at home using their air. But exactly. I think, in, I think in Burbank, they already had a power station, have a fire and all this stuff because everyone's using their heat and right. It's not used to everyone being at home. So I'm going to have to break into coals and turn their air on. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's an you use your refrigerator as a, as a, a pup tent like they did in the Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but then that's what, then where's my food going to go? I got a family to feed. <laughs> Sleep on a pile of jello. No, I can tell you, when I was a kid and my dad wouldn't use the air, I would rig, I put my pillowcase uh, in the freezer sometimes and then took it out. To try to go to sleep, I I literally would put my hands in the in the fridge and freezer and just try to get like on the veins, uh, those wrist veins, to like get cold, get cold from that. Like maybe that'll cool my blood down. Like so, I definitely use the freezer. I know. Can of Diet Coke right on the forehead. I I used to take I used to put a like a fan, one of those like those crappy like office fans at the yep. foot of the bed, and then I would take paper towels, soak them in water, lay them on me, and then lay down. And it would like cool down for about 20 minutes with the fan hitting those cold paper towels. But then I'd wake up like an hour later, boiling hot again, and the paper towels would be just bone dry, just bone yeah. dry because you're, you know, you're just, see, that's, that's creative. That's uh, innovative uh, thinking, you know, as you go, how, how, how do we make it not hot without turning on the air conditioning? We got to, we got to put water on the towels. You got to put the towels. It's creative. That's the start of your innovation is the uh, fiscalness of the, of the father. Yeah. And now I'm just like, all right, what kind of food? We can get a bunch of nuts. We'll get cereals. That'll last. He's always trying to problem solve. Exactly. Exactly. Do you have toilet paper? I'm good on toilet paper because when, before, um, before the whole pandemic happened, which is another weird thing that we get to say now is before the virus hit. I never I thought I'd be able to say that in real life. I mean, I obviously thought that maybe in every single movie role I would ever get, I'd get to say something like that because that's just the type of movie I want to be in. Before yeah. the virus. You know, but in real life, I never thought that that'd be a real thing that I got to say and be like, serious. like, you know, before the virus hit, I was doing all this stuff. <laughs> totally. Uh, but now it's like, yeah, no, before the virus hit, I, uh, timing wise, ran out of toilet paper and I went to the store and bought more toilet paper, wet wipes, all that stuff. And so it was just, just because like, you do just because I was out. That's smart. More. I luckily ran out at the right time and bought enough. So like, I'm good with toilet. I, I haven't got need to go to the store to like, I can't find toilet paper. Oh my God. You know, cause they're all out. Every single store that I've ever been into in this time of pandemic has been completely out of toilet paper. And I think, uh, I think it's back now because the supply chain is kind of restarted up and like the, the initial yeah. shock has gone over. And I think they, they've done a lot of 24 hour um, cycles now to, to get that stuff out there. But that's, I, I guess, um, uh, it's so hard to do a podcast and not like, I'm like, I want people to be able to escape right now from pandemic stuff, but it's impossible <laughs> to like have you on and not be like, so do you have toilet paper? Do you have food? Like, how you doing? You get outside. Like, it's paper, hard to not wet, talk about it. I, get, I got toilet paper. I got wet wipes. I got uh, uh cleaning supply. I got the Lysol. I got the Clorox. Oh, uh, what, what have you, the, uh, you know, all, all that good stuff. And uh, I got food, uh, which is nice. And uh, I got some hand sanitizer and I got a mask and it's, you know, it's like, this is, this is my fantasy apartment in the world of the pandemic is just a, a clean room. And I go in and it's just like, you know, pretty soon, you know, I'm just saying like, like probably after this whole thing is over, the new technology is going to be like every storefront is going to have one of those clean room, like clean. Oh, like a UV thing you stand in? Uh, like, oh. with, like totally. what they do in uh, fucking Independence Day, you know, when they go into the like Area Fifty One or whatever, and it's like totally. clean, water and it's like totally. You enter the store. I I agree a hundred percent that that's gonna be. I was joking with my neighbor the other day about like like the new uh, thing that people are gonna have to their house is it like at the front door instead of a mud room, you'll have a uh, like a bleach room where you just go in there with yeah. your thing and pull the like in Blade Runner where you just pull the thing and it like just like cut it just. What do you call it? Cleans you real quick, like exactly. And and but even a clean room with a UV light, something like that, seems so much more like oh, because 
I don't know about you're getting for your ads for Instagram and Facebook on your phone, but I'm getting like this, like the little UV like tray that you put your cell phone in, which I've already seen those before, but now yeah. they're definitely ramping that up. They're like, Oh, now's a good time to, to market that one. My, uh, my, my ads are all like mask related. Just like, oh, get the mask. I get a lot of mask ads too. And I, I posted recently a, a, a clip from the mask where I, I said, uh, you know, it's like when somebody asks you where your mask is, we all wear masks, metaphorically speaking. You know that uh, that line. Like, yeah. don't be that guy. Wear a mask. That's funny. Yeah, um, yeah I've got masks. The homemade masks have been great, and that's that's just to keep us from spreading stuff. It right. doesn't really protect us very much. But if if we all use them, then it does protect us. Right. That's that's one of one of the interesting things right now is getting information out there and then having people accept the information as a consensus to do good. Which is it's like, it's just like climate change. We have a bunch of people like that's a lie, that's a conspiracy, or this is the wrong way to do it. And they bring up some good points sometimes, and you're like, that's a good yeah. point. However, probability wise, I'm going to lead towards we should be doing social distancing. But dude, like, I mean, seeing this, the, the it's crazy seeing this conspiracy theorists come out of uh, like when I was a kid, conspiracy theorists before the internet was like a big thing, they were just fringe people and weirdos and there weren't right. really very many mainstream conspiracy theorists but now it's become like a normal mainstream niche is like i don't um, believe you fake news you're lying about like yeah. stuff that's clear that like you know, that just probability wise even if you're not an absolutist you're a weird philosopher like myself you'll still right. think to yourself probability wise this many scientists saying that i think that it's probably not a conspiracy right. but these huge groups of people that, that don't think that well it's because when we were kids the internet wasn't a thing i know <laughs> It was one of those things where I'm sure there were – and the information uh, superhighway, as it were, was uh, not as cluttered. And it was like you can, you can prove any opinion that you have. Yeah. Any opinion, you can prove it. Yep. You can prove it based on and – and, and the problem is people the – good, the good points that people make are like based off of anecdotal evidence yeah. of – just kind of hearsay and kind of it's this sort of false equivalency evidence where it's like, well, you know, we don't really know what they're putting in these things. It's like, no, 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 you don't know. You like, we're not like, I'm not a doctor. I don't know how this stuff yeah. is. So I don't know, but I have faith in the doctors. It's not faith, but it's like the doctor knows if, you know, that's sort of, it's that sort of belief of just like, well, would you let some guy just put it like it's the anti-vaxxers, you know, it's like, would you let some guy put mercury in your system? It's like, I wouldn't let some guy no. put yeah. something in, the, but somebody who's trained for 20 years in the art of medical science, who's done the research and everything like I'd trust him, you know, or, or, I'd, or I'd, if you just look at the statistics of like, yes, vaccines are not perfect. Yes. You're like, you have to be able to look at the other side of an argument and say like, you're right about these seven things, but these other 23 things you're completely wrong about. And right. here's why I think that those wrongs are bigger than those seven rights that you have. And vaccines well, is such a good example or climate change. Yeah. It's, it's snowing this winter more than it has in 12 years. There's no climate change. Like they never said that you wouldn't have like different fluctuating weather patterns. Right. You exactly. have cold times on our planet. Climate change is about an overall, like there's a lot, you're bringing up a good point, but right. you're missing these but other things. And it's these false it's become a really political episode. It's these false equivalencies where it's like, you know, when you when you're talking about climate change, it's like, oh yeah, but you uh we're just trying to make you know, like why are you trying to separate humans from nature? We are nature. It's like that's not what that's you're yeah. you're expanding the argument. You're you're rubber banding our when you when you're trying to have a specific topic that we're talking about and then you go like what about this, which is a complete left field, it's like that's what aboutism. It's like when the only, thing that, to, only what about I like is what about Bob? Am I right? Bob, Bob, oh, that's the man. best what aboutism. Like that's about that's a precursor for social distancing. If I've ever seen a movie about social distance, <laughs> social it really is. It really is. Me? <laughs> Love that. Right. Oh my god! All right, take us to the geographic location <clears throat> of your fantasy house. What are we flying over with with the fantasy house drone? <clears throat> what am I seeing? Excuse me. Well, no, no. all right. You're We're not so far apart. So. If I'm taking you over my fantasy house, you're not seeing anything, first and foremost. You're not okay. seeing it from above. Okay. You can't see it. it you can't hidden. see it. Okay. It's all underground. Okay. Well, what's the, what's the location that it's underground at? What are we flying over? 
let's say, I'm a I'm a big I'm a big California fan. I love I love living out here, and so the uh, the 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 this the 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 view from the windows are uh, are are basically out into like the, you see the ocean, you see the the distance, you see the beautiful vistas of both the Pacific and uh, and well, you know, let's say let's say and the mountains, the Pacific okay. and the mountains. So you can okay, see both. Greedy fuck. Perfect. You yep. got both of them. The mountains and the and My the ocean. Man, of course I'm going to be greedy. All right. <laughs> When you say you're what? Sorry, the, the, it went in and out. It's my fantasy, man. It's my fantasy. I'm, no, that's true. I generally say, like, don't worry. Get get both of them. Chocolate and vanilla. It's your fantasy. <laughs> okay, so we're coming up to the front door. Uh, to are you going to greet us at the front door? Chocolate and vanilla. It's just chocolate. <laughs> I take both. I'm a swirler. No, I know, but it's like if you mix them up together, it's like it, the chocolate will outweigh the vanilla. It will make it a... Yeah, it's all good. I'll take the swirl cone too. I love the swirl cone. <laughs> oh, dude. Okay, so we come to your front door. Since it's invisible, what what's the front door? How do we get into this place? Is there? Well, a so door? get into the front door um, by it's this. It's like you remember the old Batman. Um, yeah, nineteen six Batman with the uh, you drive in and it's the rock that you don't see. It's like, I'm I'm a big fan of the secret entrances. I like the secret entrances. Okay, awesome. Stuff. I got a secret entrance secret entrances and stuff like that. And you only know if you've been invited. See, so you, you know, solicitors know nothing like that. It's like, but people, only my close friends and, and well wishers will know how to get in and stuff like that. And the family and, you know, like they, they know, but it's like, ah, yeah, it's, and it's cool for people to use like the secret codes. You know what I mean? It's like, that's a cool thing for people to be able to, it's like, Oh, this is a secret entrance. It's fun. It's fun. It yeah. makes things feel special. Exactly. And that's what I want. If people come over to my house, I want them to feel special. So what's and the secret code? How do we get in? Oh, I can't say that out loud. Uh, it wouldn't be a secret. This, this is, is a very, this is a forum. This is a this very is a inclusive podcast. podcast. We want our listeners to be there pressing in your code. All right. All right. All right. So it's, it's can change this, it after this. I will probably have to change it after this. It's, it's the, uh, it, you have to say a line from, uh, the Sandlot. Okay. And that's how you get the ball removed. You know, it's like, well, I would have gotten it for you. You know, you got, and you got to do it in James Earl Jones. You only know more lines from Santa. I only know the one famous line. Forever. That nope. one? Or, nope. Which one? Keep going. The, the famous line from Santa. I thought forever was the, was nope. the famous line. You're killing me, Smalls. Yep. That one? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's more what? That's so you have to, one of those lines, like you had to do, you had to do a line of dialogue from the movie, The Sandlot, and that'll okay. open the door. Okay. Because um, that's just childhood fun. That's what it is. And I know. It's childhood it, fun. That's why we love it. Okay, so uh, you're killing me, Smalls, and uh, we're inside. So take, a, take, us, take us to your kitchen. Show us what, what, what we got. Okay, well, the kitchen is uh, – I, I, honestly, I love to cook. I, that's something that I have been having fun with during this pandemic is I, I've been cooking and yeah. I've been making stuff. So the kitchen's going to be uh, – pretty big it's going to be huge it's going to have the stoves uh the the, uh gas iron stoves and it's going to have a wood uh uh oven you know like one of them woods burn up you know stone mason ovens or whatever oh yeah Uh, we make pizza yeah uh stone oven with the fire and then the refrigerator is going to be one of those you remember in that movie the jetsons meets the flintstones where Dude, it's been so long, but I remember watching when I was a kid. You know, they had the bag that was every that like was a yeah. small bag, but you opened it up, it was like, shh, yeah. you know. And Jetsons like, were always about that, dude. Jetsons and, were always about that. Suitcases yeah, too. Fact, you can pack everything with you, your whole house. You know. Yeah. Uh, what did you say? You can pack if Jetsons they they pack anything they want in their whole house, and then be like, open up the suitcase, and then the whole thing would come out. That's the fridge that I have. You open okay. it up, and it's literally everything you it's it's that fridge where it's like it, it never runs out. Everything, every ingredient, and the milk never goes sour. Oh yeah, and, it's like uh, an infinite magical like Erwan or Whole Foods. You just exactly. always go there. There's always mint. Always, the, and the seasoning never clumps up and dries or anything like that. That's beautiful. And and the freezer is in the same uh, vein. You open up the freezer, and it's that meat market, like yeah. in Rock, where you 
punches and you know just like, it's one of those things rocky in there punching the the uh, a beef you gotta tenderize it you know and that's why i got rocky in there tenderizing the meat <laughs> remember how hard he was hitting it and like you're a kid oh, you're like yeah he's just training and then you get older and you're like if you ever just like bumped your knuckle on a piece of frozen steak like that is not easy to just hit into it. dude so strong <laughs> You know what I have to use to tenderize the meat is that fucking metal hammer with the spikes on it. Uh. Yeah. And so much someone used his knuckles. Yeah. Well, S- Sly, baby. He Sly. is. Uh, he knows how to make his uh, meat tender. Okay. Uh, so bring, that, that was a sexual joke. Quote, so but, so bring, bring, bring us outside your crazy magical uh, uh, thing uh, again, your magical uh, cupboard uh, and, and fridge. And, and, well, there's, there's, a, you know, there's, the center, there's the center island is going to be an actual island. <laughs> like with water surrounding it yep exactly because i saw i always felt and this is something that i honestly wanted to try to make into a bit but i never knew how to make it the right words it's like only truly rich people have center islands because they want an island in their house mm-hmm. you know it's like what do you yep. want in your kitchen i want an island but a center uh, like a kitchen island it's Hilarious. like i want to own my own island and have this in the you know, like center. How big your house would have to, it's like a Dyson sphere, uh, a Dyson sphere of an of an island, as opposed exactly. to a star. Your house would have to be so huge. I like the Star Trek reference. Maybe I think that's the Star Trek reference, right? It's a general sci- sci-fi. Like it's actually a technically possible thing. It's just really big. It is, it's you, uh, you impose it's, an entire star in in a, like yeah. a solar thing, and you absorb all of its energy from it. And right. So, I mean, it would be kind of depressing if they did that to the sun because you'd be like, we have infinite energy, but also I want to see the sun. But, I want you know, the sun. well, they did like a Dyson star. star. That's why I know what the Dyson sphere is because of yep. Star Trek. All right. Sponsored uh, by Dyson Vacuums. Dyson. This podcast is sponsored Fuck by it. Up. Right? Okay, exactly. so you have an island Wait, in there. That, huh? that Dyson vacuum cleaner's uh, slogan, Dyson, suck it up. Suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Dyson, suck it up. You're like, I don't know, sir. I don't know if we're going to go with that one. Suck it up. Dyson, chicken. Suck it up. Cluck it up. Right? Dyson, nobody sucks better than us. <laughs> and was so, it Wayne's World? <laughs> what? Wow, it certainly does suck when the, the, the hair cutter vacuum thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which we hey, all fucking need right what? now. How hey. bad do we all need those vacuum hair cutters now after uh, all this? Oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, sucking my wheel <laughs> to live. Sucking my brain. Uh, what are you going to cook us in this kitchen now since you have infinite everything and you love to cook? Yeah, well, so I – so this isn't going to sound – this isn't going to be too, too fantastical, right, this this uh, meal that I'm cooking you, but – I don't get I have, shit. I eat cheeseburgers. Go on. Listen, I, I, I make a few things amazingly well. That's I what, make a few know, things amazingly well. Make a few things. That's the, that's the name of the restaurant that I'll start. Also, uh, I make a few things amazingly well. List the, list the three. That's actually a really long name. You're you're gonna go out of business really fast. It's really I don't think to because people are gonna have fun saying it. Say, you have to say it in an accent, and so whatever they like, they're gonna I make things list, extremely make well. Amazingly well. <laughs> the post pandemic panini. It's just so good. Yeah. Okay. I'm it as well. What are the three so, things that you're best at? Three things. Uh, tater tot oh. casserole. Tater tot casserole. Mm-hmm. Uh, macaroni and cheeseburger. Macaroni and cheeseburger. So that, so just to let everybody know what that is, just so you know, it's, it, have you ever heard of the Juicy Lucy? Uh, I don't know if it's going to be the same thing because it didn't have to do with food. Go on. So the Juicy Lucy is a cheeseburger with the cheese melted inside of the meat. The cheese, the cheese is in the burger. Is that the name of a general uh, cheeseburger that anyone can make, or is it a certain place? Because I know, uh, it's, it's, I know it's, Golden it's, State makes something like that. That was uh, created in Minnesota. It's a Minnesota delicacy. Okay. Uh, the Juicy Lucy. And so my variation on the Juicy Lucy is the macaroni and cheeseburger where macaroni and cheese is inside of the burger. So you oh, bite wow. it. It's like a, uh, I, it's like a hot pocket, but a burger with. And uh, you've made this before? I make, yeah, I make it. I make it amazingly. Really? Amazingly. Oh, yeah. How have we never had this? And how? Have I, yeah. Okay. Go on. That's sounds great. Oh, yeah. so, okay. So juicy Next Lucy. Time version of, of make, uh, make your own cheese cheese burger. Okay. and uh stuffed you, french toast oh what do you put in the french toast i put uh so i put bananas and oh, whatever love bananas fruit and maybe some strawberries if you want or whatever other fruit you want like that's you can oh, do you, whatever you can stuff it with bananas i'm sold already oh 
you say so you have bananas and then you so you seal the french toast with some honey so it's bananas and honey inside yes. on the inside of the french toast yes what you do is you smash up a bunch of uh, cinnamon toast crunch oh i thought you were gonna say people's windows in their cars because you're angry okay yeah go on of course, well, that's what you do when somebody doesn't tip uh <laughs> but <laughs> you smash up the french cinnamon toast crunch you know and you use that as the bread so you egg the bread oh you know, my god you put it uh you use the cinnamon toast crunch as the breading so that when you fry it up, it caramelizes. You've made this before? Uh-huh. Dear Lord. Yeah. I want this right now. I, I want to okay. – I'm, I'm, I'm having, you know, the, this is day 37 for me, so I'm just going on carb fest. Uh, yeah. I think that's 27 days I've been eating uh, normal. So, yeah, I, I I can go in my kitchen right now. I, I just got eggs yesterday. There you go. Do you have cinnamon <laughs> I don't have, crunch? I don't, have, I don't have cinnamon toast crunch, but I have bananas. Okay. I, have, I have bread. I have yeah. eggs. Bread. You make the. You, you got honey. You gotta make. You, yeah. you school with some honey. And you, you, if you don't want, if you don't have cinnamon toast crunch, that's okay. It'll. You, if you have some like cinnamon sugar seasoning, you can do that as well, and have that be the uh, oh, seasoning on it. Sounds but so good. If you don't have the cinnamon toast crunch, you put the cinnamon sugar seasoning in the egg that you dip the French toast in, so it's locked in and it it's, uh, uh, sticks to the bread. Uh, and then you fry it up, and that's the and that's the uh, stuffed French toast. Oh, it sounds so good. Those are the top three things. I have a few others, but those are the top three. Okay, um, that's absolutely outstanding. So I'm glad you're making those for us because imagine it, imagination style. I'm just like ready to eat all this stuff right now, but I'm also mm-hmm. trying to think while you're telling me this. What do I have that I can go make all this stuff with it, in my fridge right now? <laughs> I just stocked up on groceries, so it'd be crazy to just gorge myself on it and be like, we don't have food for the next two weeks because Dad ate everything. <laughs> I made it all. I made I'm stress it all. eating. Yeah. It's so good. But I'm then, just but, trying to survive the pandemic mentally. But the other thing about the fridge and the freezer in this fantasy house is that you, if you don't eat everything right away, you put it there. And however long it stays there, it's it's good. It's still good. Uh, it, you, you never have to throw anything out because uh, it's all good. You never have, have to throw anything out. Put to uh, waste. Yeah. Never have it put to waste. Ever. Love it. All right. This is a fresh zone everything is always fresh no matter when you eat it welcome to the fresh zone everything's always fresh, fresh no zone. matter when you eat it the fresh <laughs> zone that's also the slogan for my uh i make three things really well <laughs> i make three things really well welcome welcome to the fresh zone <laughs> welcome to the fresh zone where we make three things really well and other stuff fairly well too but trust us on those three things it's dry is gonna be delicious because it all goes to the same place anyway so if I you like you're going to love it. Either way, it's going into our sewage systems, which we'd be happy to explain to you. If you turn to the back of the menu, it actually describes how the sewage system works. <laughs> Gross. It's like Cheesecake Factory, but instead of advertisements, it's nonstop like science things and explaining yeah. how things work in society. And you're like, ugh. It's the water from the toilet in our circular system that makes everything okay. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. This French toast is made with, what do they call it? Gray water. It's made with gray water. Gray like water. <laughs> Eco-friendly French toast. Gray water <laughs> French toast. Oh, I love it. Okay. Uh. So that, that meal sounds amazing. Let's go to, uh, do you have a, a garage? So yeah, of course, there's a garage. And honestly, this is based off of uh, just, it's, it's pragmatism, okay? It's, it's pragmatic use of the garage. People don't use their garage that like, you, you have to have, it's a heated garage. You have to have a heated garage because yeah. it's, you, you want it to be. like a fascist, but all right, yep. It, it may be, but it, it may be my Minnesotan upbringing, but the garage was, you got to have it heated. You can't have the ice being yet have snow. Like yep. you have a heated garage yep. where your dogs, basically your garage is your dog's bedroom. Okay. What kind of dogs and in there? Pushing floor. Of course you got an English Mastiff, an Irish Wolfhound, a couple Great Danes. And uh, I'm so confident. Of course you've got these 12 Irish. dogs that cost a thousand dollars a month to feed. Yes, of course. But and the other thing though is, these types of dogs, it's also a fantasy house, is they take care of their own uh, uh, feces. And the, like they, they go to the bathroom. And they don't, you don't have to worry about their poop. You don't have to worry about doing that stuff. So they, it's taken care of. They, they know how to dismantle it. They are automatically house trained and everything like that. And they're smart enough that they're like, it's cool. We're, we're, we're cool dogs. We're just hanging out out here. Where you know all that stuff, you know what I mean? I, like I love it, and this is like a, this. Is, this makes me feel like this is beyond just a fantasy house. As it, it, it's 
you get a fantasy reality for you to be like, you know, if I could change one thing about dogs, they would take care of their own poop for me. Yeah. I love that. Okay, that's great. Uh, it, what, it, what does it, it look like in there? And there'd be no miscommunication. They'd be able to communicate with you easily. Oh, dude, I love dogs that can talk. Have you ever seen Up? I was like, the, yeah. I was just like, what, what, forget all this other stuff. When can we talk to our dogs and cats? I just want but to it's, have a... It's not, not even like that they can talk. It's more like there's just an understanding. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, like, there's mental connection. It's a this lot more sort of like, You know when a you know when, you. They're what cute dogs. Are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to tell me, dog? What are you trying to tell me, girl? It's like no, you know exactly. It's like it's, oh, that look means she's hungry. That look means she uh, wants to go out. That means she wants to go for a walk. That means that she, you know. So basically, you're saying in your fantasy house, you're not autistic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, basically, yes. Basically. You can read the facial expressions of other beings and understand their body language? You know how you can read body language between humans? Well, now you can read it between dogs, and they can read it very easily. Okay, With- so what's your garage look like? Paint the picture so we know. Like um, so Flooring. You got an epoxy floor? You got tile? You got regular cement? You got wood? What is it's, it? Uh, it's a uh, cement floor. Okay. With uh, drain a drainage system in there, so that it's uh, it doesn't you know uh, hold water. You know, it's like it's not yeah. like you can clean it easily and everything like that. Does it have regular and, garage doors and, and paint on the walls, or is it, is it standard garage where it doesn't even have drywall? It's a it's it, yeah regular garage door. It well it's it's uh, I'm thinking like a big garage, like a mechanical garage. You know, like yeah. at a a dealership or whatever like that's okay. the size of it okay cool and because you want to be able to you know walk around it you want to be able to like you want to have because if it's also your dog's bedrooms and stuff like that so you want to make sure that they have room to run around and 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 uh relax and have a play place you know that yeah be dogs yeah okay be, be what they want to do on the like inside if they want to protect themselves from the elements you know that's yeah. like their space as well yeah and uh you know, and and so it's like uh, you have one or two cars, however many cars you want can fit in this place, you know, but you don't need what, more than one car, really, you know. What cars would we see in there? What color and, and you know, what, what are we looking at? You got to paint well, the picture for me. Okay, so, like, the cars that – I always had an affinity for, like, uh, Aston Martins and uh, Lexuses, Lexi, Lexuses, I don't know. Uh, that sounds cool. Uh, and uh, and the the, the Denali, the Yukon Denali. If you're gonna have like a fucking truck, you know that's uh, sort of, of course sort of fancy, nice. Like, but it's like ah, this is awesome. Like, it's nice. You can go off roading, but you can also sit in leather. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, like, it's super fancy boy. That's like fancy boy off roading. Yeah, so exactly. It's like you don't even want to get out of that car and then get back in with dirt on your shoes because it's everything so nice in those things. Exactly, exactly. It's for the foreman that doesn't want to get out of his car. He just rolls the window down and yells at the workers. Yep. It's uh, self-cleaning, though, as well, you know? Love it. This is the technology that I love in this show. When people get Rick and Morty on it, when they get Adventure Time, when they just get weird and they're like, not, ah, only, does it it have, not only does it have self-cleaning interiors, it also has heat war- seat warmers and seat coolers. So in case you're ever feeling very hot, you can put on the seat coolers. It cools you down body temp wise. And just like, all right, it's nice. And it gives you a nice burst of fresh air every so often. You want to ah, smell nice. And it gives you, uh, uh, what's it called? Clarisol? Like, what is it when you need to clear your sinuses up? Oh, Claritin, right? Yeah. If you, if you're ever stuffy, it senses it. And you're like, instead of, it's like, ah, all right, now I'm clear. And, that would be so weird if life was that simple that it like something else sensed that you needed a medication and did it. And you, yeah. you in a couple of generations, we would be such pieces of shit. Like we probably are now like ungrateful. <laughs> like you wouldn't even know, like, do you realize how many headaches you would have had you bitch? Yeah. You know I mean? We wouldn't but, be able to handle it. And that's the thing that those, that anecdotal, like we need to just use the virus because we need to get the immune system up and blah, 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 blah. It's like, eh, there's some truth to it, but also, at the same time, you know, when you try to give a kid chicken pox before they are supposed to get it, they could die. There's, there's stories like that. You know what I mean? It's like there's South Park episodes that have covered that. That's for shizzle. Yeah. Okay. Take exactly. us, take us to, we we went, we had a huge breakfast and lunch at your, at your, at your kitchen, went to your garage, hung out, played with your dogs for a little bit. Uh, I have to go to the bathroom. Take me to your weird, weird, wild, <laughs> unique bathroom. 
You go to the bathroom, and it's – This is really the order. I mean, if this was not – if this was an actual uh, a show where I came to your house, this is really the same order it would go in. I'd make yeah, you feed me. Absolutely. Then it would make and you hang the out. Then is, I'd be like, I got to use your bathroom so, now. Because it's so big and, and wide and spread out, you need travel – you know, you you have those. Uh, uh, it's kind of like it. It's a hoverboard type thing, but it's like a, like it's like all right, follow us. Oh, I love yeah. it. You have uh, you have a, a hoverboard type thing that you know, takes you anywhere. You, know you mean need. a hoverboard with the wheels that people? You mean an actual hoverboard? Oh. So you're really floating over the ground. Yeah, that makes. You know, yeah. like in the Jetsons, where like you yeah, know, oh, yeah. Rose Jetsons, how she moves around. Like oh, that's yeah. something that like her base is basically what you have to move around in the house anytime you want. Um, and there's also like, <laughs> it's also, you remember like uh, in Super Mario Bros, they had those vines that you just like, whoa. You know oh, yeah. I mean? Totally. You have those stuff too. If you don't oh, want to use it, you can use like, all right, let's go. And you just leap to the other room. <laughs> I want to do, I want to do a hoverboard uh, to the bathroom, but then I'm also going to, I'm going to use one of those vines when I exit the bathroom to go to your master bedroom. Okay, let's go to that bathroom. So, uh, so the bathroom, uh, it's basically there's uh, the uh, the shower. It takes up about like half of the bathroom. And it's just like a little, and there's uh, the, the, the faucet is at the very top of the ceiling. Yeah. The center that comes down on you and with a few other faucets around you. So you get, hit on all sides yeah and there's a big old drain so it's like and it's a heated floor once again you don't want because you don't want to get up and barefoot and be cold in the morning no it's a heated floor ah nice don't you know not barefoot you know i'm barefoot but i'm not cold yeah it's very nice like that and uh you got a very open wide sink that is easy and all every room in the bathroom is separated so you got the shower room you got the toilet, you got your sinks. Because a big problem with the bathroom is that the toilet is in the same room as where you keep your toothbrush and you like the fecal, you know, stuff is in the air and it's like you're brushing your teeth in the same place you take a shit and it's just like what are you, it's uh, gross. You it's know? Like, it's Kevin the comedian. That's not right. Not right. Was it Kevin uh oh, I can't remember his name. You know what I'm talking about. That's not right. Oh, and not right. I don't know. If you're a listener, a fantasy house listener, somebody knows that who that comedian is. Oh, I wish I remember his name. He was so funny. He's not with us anymore, but he's hilarious. And that was like his punch for a lot of stuff was that's not right. <laughs> that's not right. He'd say like, that's not right. Okay. 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 Well, an influence on my childhood. And I can't yeah. remember his name. Very much so. God bless um, Yes. R.I.P. Uh, but the, so every room in the bathroom is is separate. So you can so when you go to the bathroom, you can close the door, and it's just a toilet room, just the toilet room. That's right. All right, and That's the it. toilet is a is a throne. Oh, it's a throne. It's an absolute like an treat. actual throne. You want to sit in this on this toilet. What it's, does it look like? Describe it visually. What, what are we looking at? So it's it's uh, it has a built-in squatty potty. Like it's you know where you can put your feet up, yep, and so your your bowels are going to be exited properly and yeah, not a, ba- a Bangladesh bowel movement for sure. That's the way nature yeah. did it. It's going to be a heated seat, and it's going to have a bidet within it, and it's going to have like a, a massager that massages your, massages your butt cheeks. <laughs> You know, it's like ah, because nice. you know if you if you have too long on the uh, on the toilet, you your legs start to go to sleep or oh, whatever. Yeah, you remember that scene? All of a sudden, you're 30 emails in, and you're like, okay, I gotta get up. You remember from Lethal Weapon? You know when when uh, 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 Donald uh, Danny Glover is uh, you know his feet fell asleep, his legs fell asleep because he's on the bomb on the toilet. Well, yeah. that the feet falling asleep not happening. Not gonna happen. I'm, I love it. Not gonna happen. We we saved you. Danny, come on, we saved you. Thank you. Uh, and it's it's going to be this. Th- it's going to have a, a backrest too, where you can just lean back. Oh my uh, god! And just like, and honestly, you're not even like. And again, for the toilet paper thing, it's such, it's so stupid. 
Pooping is so stupid. It feels it, it's necessary, obviously, but it's such a design flaw in humanity that we have to poop. It's a design flaw that we have to eat and that we have to poop. Like have to, like have to. Yeah, you know, I mean? being a slave to anything. Yep, I agree. Have to, and but it's also a blessing, dude. If you didn't have to eat, you could just do it for joy. But some people would have to learn it as a skill, and 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 they'd be depressed but, all the time. You'd be like, "Oh, but, you never learned to just enjoy a quesadilla?" Okay, yeah, that's a quesadilla. You can learn to eat, but have to is like, oh, I have to. Like it's a chore. Like I have to. You can actually start I, fasting I, and not have to do it every day. Just say what? Quick. You can all, you can start fasting and not have to do it every day. I but used to have, fast a lot before the quarantine. Yeah. I would fast like once a week at least. But that takes out enjoyment. If you do it only when you have to do it, that takes out the enjoyment. That's true. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Either way, so, I'm, lay, I'm laying down on your leaning, your reclining <laughs> shitter, which is just a really weird way to poop. I don't think you're I've ever pooped. Down, you're sitting up, but you're leaning back. You're not lying down. Okay. You know, biology is biology. But the toilet has a suction that cleans you out. That's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> Gross is throwing it suction it's suctioning the poop out. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you have to wipe. It cleans you out. So great. So great. you don't put your hand up your ass? No, no. You don't want to what you use paper to clean out the poop. This is do that does it for you. It cleans you out. Wipes Love you it. out. Love it. Okay. It cleans you. Well now Take that I'm clean out. now that I'm clean and I've been through your uh amazing throne. <laughs> your porcelain throne it's the throne room it's the, the throne, throne room. room i still want to take a shower and so you can go as you leave the toilet room we gotta take go. one we all gotta take one it's the fan, the crew's gotta film you and me taking the shower as you're showing me around how the shower works right so you you leave you you get up and you flush the toilet you know you do a little snap it, it's you, you snap three times and it flushes so you don't have to touch anything yeah um and so then you go, you close the door, and it locks, so there's no germs that get out. You you get into the uh, the shower room, and you go, uh, you know, shower on, and it starts slow and fills you up, steams up, and it gets hot or cold, depending on if you like to take a hot or cold shower. I like how you're just describing a regular shower. You're like, and then it gets hot or cold, depending on what you like, and water comes out of the faucet. Right, of course. It's a, you know how in Star Trek they have those sonic showers where it's waterless? I don't remember that. So I they have Star Trek sonic so much when I was a kid. I don't remember that at all, though. So you get sonic showers, and, and if you want a water-based shower, you can have that. Or you can just do a sonic shower, which is just literally it clean. You, you're, it's a dry clean. It's like a dry clean. Okay, I don't like you, that. I need the can, hot water. You but get dry. they have the holodeck. We could have a holodeck in here, but I no, mean... No, I'm saying Star Trek, not you. Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> but, so you can get, you can do a, you can do, it, there's multiple things that you can do with this shower. You can do a traditional shower, but remember that, you know, it's, it's all faucets all around you, so you're completely covered with water. If you want what, like, it's... And it, you get it's not the like there's gonna be something other than water that could come out of this show. <laughs> you, you can't like <laughs> minestrone soup. <laughs> if you want, like, listen, it's your it's your shower. You can have what you want to come out of it, come out of it. But it's you know, water is the traditional thing. I think but it's a place also, in Germany where you can have a hot beer bath. I think it's in Germany, and they said it's really good for you because beer is so good for you in so many ways. Really. I'm th- I'm pretty sure there's a beer bath place in Germany. Yeah, we'll have that. We'll have that be a button on this. And you want a beer yeah, bath? You, uh, you want? Yeah. And that's the other thing is you can take you can have it turn into a jacuzzi pool bath tub as well. You don't have to have it be a shower. It can be a bath. What would you have it as right now, though? For us, like as we're here, uh, shower, okay, shower. Sure. I'm a shower man myself. I'm going to take a bath. I'd rather just sit in the jacuzzi. Oh. I love a jacuzzi. I love a bath. I love a jacuzzi. I love a shower. Don't make me choose is what I always say. Exactly. Uh, so why do you have to choose? You can't bring you can soap it. in the jacuzzi, so probably a bath or a shower. No, I love jacuzzis. I would take a jacuzzi, then take a shower to clean off afterwards. Okay. Exactly. I'm, I'm taking us off the, off the rails. Let's get back on it. Take, take, let's go to, we're all clean now. Let's go to your master bedroom. I want, I want to know what it's like over here. So you have these buttons with the shower. Uh, you can have a traditional shower. You can have a beer bath shower. Or yep. you can have a clean shower. 
a dry so, clean shower, Star Trek style. Exactly. It's, you know, sonic, sonic, uh, sonic shower and whatnot. But okay, we're clean. We're going out into where are we going now? Where, 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 where am I taking you? Take me to your master bedroom. That's where we should finish this master, puppy off. Master bedroom. All right. Well, so first and foremost, I didn't get to a few of the rooms that are also in my house. Uh, there's the silent movie room where you go into the silent movie room and it is in fact like you're living in a silent movie where there's no sound. It's just that piano that is in silent movies, the soundtrack, and you're all in black and white. And every time you try to speak. Oh, I love, so we're not, we're, we're not watching silent movies. If the room no, makes things silent movies. Not a silent movie. It's so weird. It's a room where there are, there's no sound. You walk into the room. There's no sound anymore. It's oh, just, it's, so trippy. it's just silent movies. Yeah. Uh, like within a silent movie. So it's like, and you can chase people and it's like, duh, 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 duh. you're like, Oh yeah. And then the, yeah, I'm playing the, in the background and the words come yeah, up. Yeah. And so and the cool. words pop up anytime you speak and blah, blah, blah. And so there, that's a room in the house. That's a few, another room. It's a few rooms in the house, you know, so you can cha- you can do a chase scene as well, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, so that's one of the rooms in the house. Another room in the house is a musical room where it's, like you're in a music if you have, if you ever want to you know get information across but you don't want to speak it you want to sing it you go into this room and you turn into a musical it's this you know that's I love how using this episode to come out of the closet that's so cool i'm so honored <laughs> well it's coming out of this closet that creates this uh <laughs> form like and every closet is a secret door it's it's a book, bookcase closet that you can, you have to, because again, you know, you gotta have the secret entrances. You gotta have the secret entrances. You have a couple cliche things. You have to have a, a bookcase, uh, a book that comes out that, that gets. I you mean, in. it's Young Frankenstein's the candlestick. Oh yeah, know. put the candle back. You know, oh dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of musicals, right? Yeah, exactly. It's so uh, funny when I, when I realized at a certain age that I loved musicals. I never thought I did, and I realized all my favorite stuff is South Park, everything Mel Brooks, Mighty mm-hmm. Boosh. All of it is like, oh, it's all, all music. Music. Concord, it's all musicals. Yeah, all musicals. Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. When I was a kid, loved it. I just freaking love uh, musicals. Little Shop of Horrors is one of the best musicals. Oh, ever. Yeah, dude, musicals are so great. All right, yeah. sorry, I sidetracked it. Uh, I'm not making this about myself, although I am. My podcast. There's also a huge, you know, uh, studio music studio that you that I have every instrument known to man uh, and unknown to man. I was every just say, what about unknown to man? <laughs> oh, dude. you asshole every, that's so funny instrument that could ever be and ever every every single instrument that ever was ever will be and ever could be is there and uh would the, they include the universe itself though because i'm sure we make a sound of some sort all together doing all this stuff sure yeah that could be there i mean it's uh, literally anything you can imagine is there it's like brian wilson on on brian wilson on acid on acid you know what i mean like that's well, acid, brian wilson <laughs> Double X and Brian Wilson. Which we could all be crazy and think of such weird stuff. I always love you. Um, but I will always. Okay. okay. Uh, what else are you going to show us? Because we're we're coming to the end. Coming to the end. Okay. Well, so that you, you have all that music room and everything like that, and you have everything like that, and then the master. So okay, so I, I wanted to make sure I got in the silent movie room because that was a big part of this thing and the music room, and then also. It's uh, the um, the cushion room where you can just, you know, it's high. You know those, like, trampoline rooms, like, that you can go to, that you can jump off of high, like... Yeah, I've taken, I've taken my son to them. They're great. Yeah, I have rooms like that. Okay. With Throughout the house. Like, there's just certain rooms where it's just like, all right, it's just, just let's, like, let's practice falling from great heights. I like that. You know? I like that a lot. And there's slides and there's a water park as well. And uh, you just try to throw in some last minute stuff like you're on some sort of supermarket sweep for fantasy house stuff. There's a water park. Uh, well, I just want to make sure that you know that, like, because I know that we spend a lot of time in the kitchen and the, in the bathroom, and I just want to make sure that it's like, it's not just those rooms. There's, there's a lot of other rooms in this house. Oh, man. D- dude, you, the silent movie room is genius. Yeah, it's, uh, the silent movie room is, is so one of the. I've been wanting for years. I, I've wanted it since I, I, I've, I've 
been imagining a silent movie room for probably at least 16, 17 years. Wow. Well, you got one now. Yes. And so now we go into the, the, uh, the master bedroom, which is just, you know, it's a standard master bedroom. Um, it's, uh, I love it. You don't have to go wild after, after that silent movie room. It's, it's like, you know, you go in and, and you relax, you have, your, you have uh, your bed, which is a, let's say it's a, uh, say it's a California king. Yeah. You know, a but dream it's. dream of California dreams. And it, it uh, can be, uh, it goes in, into the ground and up. And so like it, it's a self-making bed, you know, and yeah. it changes the sheets when you, you know, it's like, you know, when, uh, you press a button and it goes down and it goes into, you know, in the Simpsons where they like replace the bed, you press the bed and it goes into the fl- it fire, like it goes into a burning fire and then the yeah. new one comes out. It's like that. Okay. <laughs> but not wasteful. It, you know, recycles and uses. I like you stopping yourself there, but not wasteful. It's not wasteful. The technology is totally it's burning. It goes and it, you know, whenever you're done with the, your, the bed every night, it, it sends it off to, you know, somebody who needs the bed. <laughs> So stupid. <laughs> You've got the Tom's Shoes bed. Yeah. Every bed you buy, we send two to people that can't afford beds. Why don't exactly. you just give them some beds? Uh, well, that's I love it. it. You can do that anytime. If you want to do it, it's an unlimited, an unlimited button where you can just press, like, I'm going to send these beds out before I, I've never even used them before. You send them out because it's generous generosity of spirit. I love it. I love it. And, uh, you have um, a fireplace in there. You have your... Uh, piano and a guitar just like available to you in there and uh uh a tv if you want to watch tv you don't have to watch tv but it's there if you Thank want to you. what would we be watching right now as as we're as we're wrapping up the show what what am i what are we going to watch together i feel like the credits will go wow you and i are watching tv uh well, i like uh i like watching star trek we can watch star, star, star trek I watch star trek which which uh series the next generation the episode oh. the light Dude, we'll watch next the generation was was the the that was the decade that I watched it as well. Me, yep, that was a big one. Picard, Jean Luc, Jean Luc Picard. What? Yeah. What? What's going on here? Yeah. That sounds Wolf. more like Sean Connery being Jean Luc Picard. <laughs> Wolf, what are you doing? Wolf. Oh man, full Connery. speed ahead there, Wolf. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. That's right. <laughs> Captain's log. Captain's log. Captain's Stop. log. Where, where can people find you? At Jeff Baldinger on Twitter and IG, Instagram. And um, uh, at Jeffrey Baldinger at, on Venmo if you want to. You freaking freak. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you want to give me some pandemic assistance. If you want to give me some money to save up for my fantasy house, because this will happen. I will uh, make uh, Oh, Baldy, this is the best time, dude. Thank you so much for sharing your imagination with us. and. Thank you for having me, man. I love it. I love you. And uh, you, man. my fantasy house anytime, any any place. And I'll make oh. you some macaroni, uh, uh, cheeseburgers, and uh, stuffed French toast anytime you want. But not just in fantasy world. When this whole thing's over and we can hang out again, I want real fantasy uh, cheeseburger. Yeah. yeah, that's for real. That's for real. That's the only non-fantasy part of the fantasy house was my right. cook. Oh my God, guys! Thank you for tuning in and listening to this episode. It means the world to me that uh, you guys did. I hope everyone is doing it as best that they can through this situation, and I hope that this like brought you guys a little bit of joy, uh, as much as it did for me to do this. Jeff, Jeff and I just uh, so good. It's so nice to be able to just escape reality for a second and just yeah. riff and have fun and feel like we're making art again. And it's just uh, I feel good. I love it. I love you, I love you, Jeffsky. I love you too, man. Uh, uh, Listeners. Like, for all the tops, you guys who are Woo. listening, now, you're the best. And uh, make your fantasy a reality. Live life the best way you can. What a way to leave them there, huh? It's like the <laughs> chicken soup for the soul comedian over there. Uh, uh, guys, uh, every, thank you guys for listening. Paul over in China just got out of lockdown. And then uh, everybody that's just a supporter, I love you guys and appreciate you guys. If it's your first time listening, though, and I don't know you, oh, man, please. Uh, hit the subscribe button give us a five star review on itunes send this to somebody that you know that's a pretty sweet call to action absolutely hit the subscribe button give us a five star review you're at home you're chilling right now just give us a review while you're chilling you know give a little review give a little review that'd be a fun thing to do give a little review 
yeah, stay safe, wear your face masks, do your best, take care of each other. I've been super inspired by everybody's things that people have been doing. There's somebody up at the street from my house actually put a, a Tupperware out in front of their house that said, uh, need one, uh, take one, got extra, leave one for toilet papers. And I just thought it was so cool. So, so cool. So, it's bringing out the best in so many people. Yeah, I have a friend who's making masks for people. I have a friend who's delivering gl- groceries for people. Same. It's, it's inspiring. Same. It's very good. Thank you, guys. Those of you that are doing stuff, and if you're listening to this and you're like one of those frontline or essential people, woo, hats motherfucking off to you. Stay safe. All right, you guys. Talk to you soon. How do I normally end the show? It's been like a month since I've recorded. I usually feel like be silly, have fun, and like.